Hi guys and welcome back to the hot seat. I hope you loved our amazing interview with our magician nine digit Dave. I think that was a great interview and I really hope that you listen to every word he said. He's someone that loves Las Vegas, loves what he does and feels like he's really doing exactly what he's always set out to be. So we are going to jump into our next guest. Now this is a fashion queen. Okay. She has her own boutique called Sassy Boutique by MK. She actually originally from Uganda and she is here to talk about herself, what she does, what motivates, what she does and all the other little things that she also has a talent for and I cannot wait to hear her story and what brought her here to Las Vegas and social media show studio. So everyone please welcome Martha Quisada. Hello beautiful, Hello. thank you so much Hello. for being here. Hi. Absolutely Hi. amazing. Please take thank a seat. You. Everyone, please look at her outfit. I want to make sure the camera catches. She's sparkled head to toe, beautiful makeup, beautiful poise. And you did mention this actually is your boutique. You're wearing everything from your boutique right here on yourself, right? Everything from head to toe. My shoes, my my rings, my jewelry, my dress. Absolutely so amazing. Okay. So thank you so much for coming here and bringing your radiant energy in here. So you, um, is this your first time at the social media show studio? Yes. It is. Well, thank you. And I'm glad that you chose the show to be on is my favorite show. But, <laughs> but anyway, you came, you're originally from Uganda, uh -huh. correct? And you had come to the States when you were in your twenties. Yes, I'm I correct. did. Uh -huh. And you were a resident in Minnesota for some time, right? I resided in Minnesota for 29 years. I've been in Vegas the last eight and a half. So. Mm -hmm. Minnesota is kind of home. Yeah. Do you do you love Vegas? Do you feel like this is the place that you love being at and want to stay in? You know, it took me a while to love mm -hmm. Vegas. When I first came, I was like, I was so lost. Mm -hmm. But with time, I started going out, networking, meeting friends, and seeing what Vegas has to offer. And right now, I'm loving it. Oh, well, amazing. But you also, since we're talking about the city and, and everything, but you travel a lot as well, because I don't know if you still are, but are you a flight attendant still? Yes, I've been a flight attendant for 19 years. I, I'm called a fly girl. I love oh, flying. Oh, okay. So that's my, my life. Uh -huh. I'm in a different state, different country, different city, mm -hmm. every, every day. And I'm sure you get to see so many new things and just kind of be inspired by every city that, that, that you go to. Right? I do. I do. I love it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to jump back. So you originally from Uganda and you kind of grew up there and all that stuff. And you fashion's been your life, right? You always were kind of known for being unique and everyone kind of, you know, seeing how, oh my gosh, like what she's wearing today. Yeah. So where does that love come from? How did that start for you? You know, like you said, since growing up, I always loved fashion I love to look different and I always just wanted to be fabulous mm -hmm. and secondly I wanted to show women and girls that you can still dress classy sophisticated and look natural and still be fabulous mm -hmm. so growing up that was my my inspiration mm -hmm. so love to dress up I don't wear a lot of makeup. <laughs> Hair's natural. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just love beautiful. to be just a natural girl and yeah. you know dress fabulously. Mm -hmm. And where have you gotten all that confidence from? Because I know, especially when you're younger, some girls go through stages of finding what their style is, right? And oh no, I don't know if I can, you know. So where did that come for you? And was it young? Um, I wouldn't say not not when I was very young. So I think when I was in my teens I started I started finding myself mm -hmm. different from what other girls <laughs> what other girls were you know when I grew up in my family I never had hair my mom used to cut out hair every school year so my head was boiled bald all the time and um, I would see the other girls with hair looking great dressed up and I felt like that was more girl, more girl mm -hmm. kind of look and classy. But then I would look in the mirror and I'll tell myself, I have a bald head, but I think I'm beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to rock what I have. So I just started, you know, embracing yeah. what I had and 
my clothing. I started wearing like long dresses. I wasn't a fan of like short dresses because long dresses just made me feel like I'm a goddess. Yeah, as it should. So, as it should. <laughs> like you're always going to the red carpet. You gotta be ready for it, right? Yeah. Now, I've never been to Uganda. I don't know as much about the culture as, um, obviously, I know of other ones. But for you, do you think that the culture and society out there has shaped your fashion sense? And how do you feel that you had to acclimate in being yourself and being very, very, you know, with drawing a lot of attention, you know, wearing gowns? Do you think that it kind of shakes the, the culture there? Or do you think it has an impact in any way? Well, maybe it may have a little bit of impact because, you know, um, the way people dress here a little bit is different mm -hmm. from how right. people dress right. when in Uganda. Some things are not allowed. Um, the time that I grew up there, you couldn't wear shorts. Shorts were not allowed. Even like pants. Pants were for, for men. Mm -hmm. And no, you can't show your skin, mm -hmm. you can't even like cross your legs when you sit down, you have to sit like, you know. Mm -hmm. So the culture is different. So it might have sh shaped, shaped, sorry, <laughs> shaped how I feel about dressing. But to me, this is my own making. None of my family dresses like mm -hmm. me. It's just my own making. I just decided to stand out. And like I said, I want want it to look classy, I want it to look sophisticated, and at the same time fabulous, and I chose my own way mm -hmm. of presenting myself. Yeah. Like that. And, and it's so. amazing, and I'm sure it's an inspiration to so many women who yeah. might not have the courage yeah. um, to, to feel like they can walk out of the house in a gown and feel yeah. like it's kind of insecure. You know, yeah. like, oh, am I too overdressed and nothing? So I'm glad that you have that and you brought that energy through the door. So fabulous. So you moved to the States, you know, in your 20s, but I know that there are other options. You know, I know you're, a lot of your family members were moving out of Uganda. I know London was one of them, right? Minnesota yeah, was. Yeah, we are all over the place. Uh -huh. I have family. I have half of my siblings in London. Then I had half of my siblings in Switzerland. And then we're all over the place. So Minnesota, where my brother and sister were here. So mm -hmm. I stopped in to London. I hang out there for a minute. And I'm, you know, I'm just going to continue on to the U.S. Mm -hmm. So that's how I ended up. Do you still miss Minnesota? Or... I miss Minnesota because it's like home, but I don't miss the snow and the cold. Right, Yesterday it was right. snowing and it's just like cold and yeah, but it will always be home. Yes, I'm from the Midwest too, so I know yeah. that, that the wind, the chill, the winters, yeah. it's brutal, right? Brutal. So you are all about self-love and you're even a self-love coach as well. Yes. Um, was coaching something that you always saw yourself doing or did that come naturally because of your um, amazing confidence? Uh, I would say, you know what, sometimes we are our own worst critics, so we criticize ourselves. Sometimes you can be there and look at other people and you envy maybe other people, maybe you think other people are better than you, and the reason is because you haven't found yourself. You don't love yourself, because if you took some time to look into yourself, and give yourself that love that you always give other people, you'll realize that you don't need to envy or want to be mm -hmm. like anybody else. So I think growing up, yeah, you know, maybe I had, I had a little insecurity, you know, I thought, oh, I'm not good enough, or I have to do things for people to be loved. Um, and I was taken advantage of in that kind of, you know, Mm -hmm. that kind of way because you know they're like oh she's really nice she can just do anything she wants to do but i was doing those things because i did not love me mm -hmm. yeah that much so once i started digging into myself and i was like hmm i think i'm good i'm good enough to be you know who i am i started going through self-love books, self-love um, courses, and I started studying about self-love. And through the studies, I managed to completely embrace myself, love myself, 
and be who I am without yeah. feeling, you know, yeah. feeling that, um, I don't know what I want to say, you know, yeah, I feeling that it's me, it's all, it's about me yeah. and it's not selfish sometimes to think about yourself yeah. and do things for you yeah. and say no to other yeah. people. So like it's okay to be yourself yes. unapologetically uh, yes right because i know a lot of people feel yeah. like oh no like people might think that i'm too you know cocky pretend yeah. i'm too into myself and i think that's the fear that people have and yeah. wanting to be confident but there is a difference and when you yeah. find that difference in which you did you you know how to hold yourself and not let anyone yeah. tell you differently because yes. you know you and you know what you want to do and what you stand for and that's the only thing that matters and, and so it is really true the, the, it's cliche saying love yourself before you can love someone else but it's yes. very very real when you experience that moment when you go ah now I understand mm -hmm. right that's true that is true and so I know you have had experience in pageantry when you've come yes. to Las Vegas right and you ended up winning I think yeah. it's called Miss Ruby is that am I yeah. correct with that one and it was something that you just happened to give a try right what was that experience like? You know, surrounded by beautiful women, but you're also being judged at the same time, you know? So, how I ended up in a pageant, okay, um, the year before I was very, very sick. I was sick, that's the year 20, 2016 before getting into 2017. So, I was sick. I had um, a condition, it's called neuropathy. I don't know if you've heard about neuropathy. You feel like mm -hmm. someone is like digging into your feet or hands, yeah. nails, heart. So I was very, very miserable. I couldn't walk, I couldn't do so many things. I had to take time away from work. And in March of 2017, my mom passed away suddenly. So I felt I felt guilty because my mom wasn't sick. She died and I'm like, oh, I was sick, but I didn't die. So that got me into some kind of depression. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, I'm here in Vegas by myself. My family, my family is in different places. So I was just depressed. So I had my friends, they started coming and, you know, getting me out of the house. And then one day I was out there and one of my fabulous friends came and her late husband, they are the pageant directors for the Lady Vegas. Mm -hmm. And they asked me to be part of the pageant and I said, okay, I'll try it. So the reason I did the pageant anyways, just, I just wanted to get out of my depression, get back into who I am, start dressing up. And I, I had started feeling well. So I just got into the pageant. I didn't go in the pageant to win. I just mm -hmm. said, I'll go meet some women, make some good friends and just enjoy the day and look fabulous. Like I hadn't looked fabulous in a while mm -hmm. and did the pageant and I won. Mm -hmm. And do you think that if you hadn't um, not done that, that you would have been able to get out of whatever you know mental state or or aloneness that you did feel do you think that shaped you in a way and it really was the point when you saw hope again uh i would say you know um uh, it was one of the things yeah that might have got me out but also you know getting out and being around people that are happy dressed up you know mm -hmm. And getting back to who I am because I'm, I've always been happy, dressed up, you know, mm -hmm. dressed and looking all fabulous. But now I had all, you know, got myself into my house, not getting out, doing anything fun. So, right. Those right. were the things that kind of like brought me back. Yeah. To. Yeah. And what would you say if you, you don't mind me asking yeah. if someone currently is in these states, because I know there's mm -hmm. always you can always find similarities with other people's lives. And mm -hmm. so if someone's listening like, oh, I, I connect with her in that way. Yeah. What would you say um, to them to give them some hope and how to maybe get out of whatever state that's they're in? You know, um, we all have been at a stage where we are down in life and surround yourself with people that are going to uplift you 
uh, stay away from negativity. Um, read a book, find a hobby, maybe do yoga, Pilates, meditate, and also seek help sometimes because sometimes you know, not everyone can get out of a, a situation. Mm -hmm. So I always encourage seek help, but surround yourself with people that are going to lift your spirits. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's what I would say. And so was Sassy Boutique um, made after this? Is this when you started getting your own fashion brand or was it happening already and before? You know, indeed how Sassy Boutique like happened is uh, like as we started talking, I, I always like, like to dress sassy, sophisticated and uh -huh. classy and I travel a lot. Mm -hmm. So when I travel, I would find these little boutiques with fabulous dresses that are unique and I'll buy them, bring them out. I wear the dresses and each time I would wear something, many people would stop me and ask where I got my dress. Mm -hmm. And I will tell them, hey, I got this in maybe Italy, I got this maybe in Uganda, I got this maybe in India or Turkey. And most of them can't go to these places right. to get the dresses. So in 2018, that's when I really kind of like started putting things together. I'm like, you know, everyone likes what, I, what I'm what i wearing. They like it. I'm going to start by, you know, doing little pop-up, you know, pop-up yeah. like little vendor events yeah. and bring some clothes and see who wants to buy the dresses. Mm -hmm. So I would just be there at events and people were buying my clothes. Mm -hmm. And always, you know, I would wear something. They want to take it off my, my body. They're <laughs> like, like, are you can selling that too? Can we have it? <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So mm -hmm. 2018, I started Sassy Boutique. So with Sassy Boutique, like I guess I say it is elegant, sophisticated, and fabulous and classy. If you want to dress, tr dress trashy, then you won't find anything in Sassy Boutique. And it's also empowering women to embrace who they are, how they look. So mm -hmm. when I do fashion shows, all kinds of models, my models indeed are from ages like 25 to 75. Mm -hmm. I don't care what size you are, as yeah. long as you're confident, you wanna be in a fashion show and look good, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. So that's how I started Sassy Boutique. So by the time I was Thick, I wasn't into the sassy. I still dressed like the way I dress, right. but I hadn't gotten a sassy boutique out. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, but then uh, after that, everything kind of started to blossom for you. Everything started to blossom. Like yes. I guess you know, we they started seeing um, people in my clothes. You know, my girls when they wear the dresses, the ones that buy dresses from mm -hmm. me, they get many compliments also. Yeah, and they'll take pictures like, hey, you know, you won't believe I got like ten compliments today, mm -hmm. and the dresses are unique. So they're not like everyone, you're going to go to Macy's yeah, or TJ Maxx. Yeah. So when I get them, I just get a few dresses and that's it. So if you get the first dress, you got it, it's yours. Yeah. And you won't find it anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Have so. you thought of um, actively designing as well and having them made? You know, that's work. <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It is. That's what it's easy for me just to go see and get, know what you like yeah, and know what just, I like. Yeah. Have someone make mm -hmm. the dresses and mm -hmm. go get the dresses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a lot of work. So yeah. I don't think at this time and age I'm not young anymore. I'm going to be <laughs> out there designing clothes. Yeah, I mean you still could design and send yeah. those designs in yeah. or, or work and be like I have an idea for a dress you've never yeah. seen. You know things like that. And everyone's different. Yeah. Um, so I would say, what are your goals? So, you know, you do a bunch of different things. You know, you're this amazing woman. You have done so much already and you're actively still doing it. Where do you say that you want to be in the next 10 years? You know, in the next 10 years, I still want to be doing what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I just want to empower okay. more younger women, um, embracing themselves, th themselves, looking classy, yeah. not being trashy. Yes. I love the rhyme. Classy, <laughs> never trashy. Okay. Yeah. Just empower women and just grow my little business. It's mm -hmm. still not up there, way up there, you know. 
So I would like to grow my business. Mm -hmm. I would still love to travel and I would like to do more self-love empowerment um, mm -hmm. retreats. Mm -hmm. And so do you offer services for your retreats and where people, because I know self-love and mental um, health care and all this stuff is a very big thing that's a universal mm -hmm. um, thing that everyone could take advantage of. They want to. Some people are more vocal, vocal about wanting that. Mm -hmm. Some people silently want that and need that. And so what type of services can you provide or if anything, tell the audience if they are interested in that? And self-love, it's just mentoring and just showing you love, mm -hmm. sharing love. I have a lot of uh, inspirational t-shirts that I give away. And it's just talking about love. Mm -hmm. So when we do the retreats, I do affirmations. I teach okay. Up okay. affirmations. Mm -hmm. And I teach you how to wake up every day and tell yourself five affirmations and stick to those affirmations for the day so don't let anything change your mind to go away like i'll wake up in the morning and i'll tell myself i'm beautiful i'm gonna have a good day no one is gonna steal my joy this is going to be the best day of my life and i stick to those things even though something negative comes by mm -hmm. i s remind myself that i told myself this yeah. is going to be a good day yeah so it's just sharing self-love mm -hmm. moments. Mm -hmm. And do you have, do you advertise retreats? Um, you know, do you have a website, anything where people can come and see if you are, if and when that time will come that you have a new retreat coming that you... I haven't done retreats here. You know, I've gone to mm -hmm. retreats. I did, I was going to do my first retreat and I okay. got so sick yeah. in October. So okay. I guess when that time comes... I will advertise for right yeah. now. I haven't. I don't have a website, but I'm working on. I'm working on. Okay. It. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, the final question, if you had overheard um, me ask yeah. the amazing magician um, that I ask every single guest yeah. that comes on here, um, is there a philosophy that you live by? Be humble. Mm -hmm. Just be humble. You know what? Being kind and humble is free. Yeah. Don't put anyone down unless you're going to pick them up. And yeah, that's how I feel. Be kind, mm -hmm. be, calm, be humble, and be fabulous. Oh, absolutely. And, and that is exactly the energy <laughs> that you exude. You know, it, it's not... I know it's, it's, we laugh about it, but it's not particularly easy for a lot of people to be confident and humble and then also fabulous at the same time Absolutely. you know and, and it's got nothing to do and I, I know I want yeah. this you to be an example of, of people that feel like well if I'm this this that and the third then that means that I'm this and it's a negative connotation yeah. that you can't be this strong independent woman mm -hmm. and dress the way you want to dress draw attention to yourself but also have that be a positive energy while also mm -hmm. being humble at the same time. That's true. You know, I know a lot of people will automatically see it and think, oh, here she is. Like, she's a diva. Well, yeah. She's superficial. Yeah. You know, oh, no, she thinks she's better than everyone. But that's not the yeah. case because this yeah. is for you. Yeah. Right? And I, and I want people to understand that it doesn't have to be to get attention from anyone else. This yeah. is just you and how you want to yeah. walk out the door. Yes. You know? Yes. And I've been lucky because everyone that knows me knows, knows that I'm humble yeah. and kind. And this is just I what just, you like and I what you want to, like yeah, fabulous, that's yeah, it. absolutely. And then I agree. The reason <laughs> I say this is because I have that, you know, that negative connotation when yeah. I'm working because I'm unique in my own way. Yeah. I love fashion and my own sense of style. And so I'll never yeah. go somewhere not fully doing yeah. something where people are like, what is she wearing? Right. And so, and, but it always <laughs> comes with like everyone saying, oh my God, I love your outfit. And they're just like, but they're, you know, and it's just always like, why can't I just dress me for me? Yeah. And you're also, you're an example of like, I've been doing this forever and it all comes from... It just all comes from the heart. I yeah. even tell like, if I, if I was today and tell a date, I'm like, hey, you know what? Don't worry how I show up. Right, you know, right. I show up with my moods. If I'm in a mood of like dressing up like I'm going to a wedding or going right, to a right. and that's, pageant or what, I'm showing up like that. Yeah. So don't worry about me and don't try to do different because... I'm doing this. Yes. We have to normalize this. Yeah. I love this. We, you need <laughs> the, the motto, normalizing, talking out the door in a gown, please. Yeah. 
Amazing. <laughs> so where can people find your boutique if you want to give them the link of where they can purchase from you or even reach out to you if you have social media, things like that? I have social media, Facebook, mm -hmm. you know, I have my, my um, business page is Sassy Boutique by MK. Okay. So you can find that on Facebook. I don't do much on Instagram. I'm more of a Facebook it's girl, so, mm -hmm. and if you want to find me on my personal page, it's Martha Quesada yeah. at Facebook. Perfect. Yeah. Well, I hope you had a great experience. I know yeah. it's your first time in the studio, yeah. and but you look amazing. You did Thank absolutely you. amazing, and I hope that you had a great experience here Thank at the you. Social Media Shows Network. Oh, thank so thank you so much, everyone. Round of applause for Martha. Absolutely amazing. You did absolutely great. And so thank you so much for your time oh, and being you. here in the hot seat. So when we come back, we're taking a little break, but you know I'm not done talking. But everyone, please write down these links to where you can reach out to these amazing people. And I hope that you've been inspired by her journey because she's definitely someone that um, you would be a great inspiration for you. So see you when you come back. Now on Digital and.